Welcome back, guys, to some more fan-made levels on the Super Mario Maker for the Wii U. The first stage that I'm going to play through is called the Pipe Maze Returned, and it was created by Need More Mushrooms on YouTube, or Daniel according to his nickname on his console. This level was meant to be a throwback to World 7 of Super Mario Bros. 3, which I think is pretty cool considering that Super Mario Bros. 3 is my favorite Mario game. This level utilizes the Kribo shoe in order to pass by munchers here and there. I really like all of the different things that you can do with the shoe in this game. I like how you can ride in a different looking shoe or even a giant one. I think it's also pretty cool that you can hop out of it if you need to as well. World 7 was never really one of my favorite worlds in Super Mario Bros. 3, but I did enjoy going through it. Personally, my favorite world was World 4. It wasn't the hardest world, it was far from the hardest one, but I just really enjoyed crushing all of the giant enemies. One thing that I liked about the overworld in World 7 in Super Mario Bros. 3 was that if you zoomed out, you could see the land areas of the world form the shape of three pipes, which was pretty cool. Time for the next stage. The next level is called Unfair Castle 1-1, and it was created by Shadow Orb 41 on YouTube, or Andrew according to his nickname on his console. If you know the secrets of the stage, then it isn't too tough to get through. You can get a Fire Flower by taking this path, which helps with getting rid of some of the Sledge Brothers later on. The next thing that you'll want to do is spin jump down this area over here, and then bounce off of the Thwomp and head to the right. Carefully make your way up the stairs and take out the Sledge Brother. I kinda like that you can put Hammer Brothers into the Super Mario World graphical style now. I know that we already had the Sumo Brothers in the original Super Mario World, but I never really considered them to be a part of the Brothers family, like the Hammer Brothers, the Boomerang Brothers, Fire Brothers, etc. At the end of the stage, you'll have to face off against the giant Bowser and Bowser Jr. You can't just take a hit and run through them, so I'd recommend either trying to dodge all of their attacks while you pummel them with fireballs, or wait until you're absolutely sure that you can slip by them and grab the axe. Onward to the next level. The next stage is a remake of Donut Plains 1 from Super Mario World, and it's the final stage in this part that I'm going to play through that was created by Shadow Orb 41, aka Andrew. You'll see quite a few Hammer Brothers throughout the main area of the stage, and just like in Super Mario World, the cape is still a very overpowered item. We'll go ahead and check out the bonus area of the stage. The bonus area isn't exactly the same as it was in Super Mario World, but that's okay. It's still very similar to it. One thing that I always like doing with Kate Mario is I like to use the spin jump to fly whenever I don't need to go really long distances. I like doing that because it looks kind of funny. The way how Mario spins with his cape as he rises into the air almost reminds me of a helicopter. We are almost to the end of the level. Alright, time for the next stage. The next stage is called Super Metroid Bros, and it was created by Kevlar44 on YouTube, or Kevin according to his nickname on his console. This is probably the longest stage that I'm going to play through, at least in this part. It'll probably take you a couple of tries before you successfully complete the level because you have to learn the correct path around the area, and even whenever you do know the correct path, you still don't have much time left once you finish the level. I really like how you have to make use of the various power-ups in order to make progress, and I also like that there are only high heel shoes in this level as well, which makes sense considering this is a Metroid-themed stage, and, spoiler alert, Samus is a woman. To be honest, I expected this stage to be in the original Super Mario Bros. graphical style, and I figured that it would utilize the Samus and Zero Suit Samus mystery mushrooms, but I'm perfectly fine with the stage being done in Super Mario Bros. 3 graphics. The stage designer did a good job finding suitable Mario replacements for the Metroid enemies, in my opinion. Eventually, you'll have to go through a couple of boss battles, which are supposed to represent characters like Ridley and Mother Brain, but you'll be fighting Bowser and Bowser Jr. here in the remake, which is to be expected. One thing that I have to give major props to the creator on is how big of a stage he's able to create out of only being allowed one additional sub-area. He truly made the absolute most out of what he had. 
Another detail that I like about this stage is that he didn't just use one pipe to take you from place to place, but instead he used three pipes, which I assume was supposed to be like that to reference how wide the doors are in the original Metroid. In this area, you're going to have to use a Koopa shell in order to break the bricks on the right so that you can continue to progress. If you accidentally kill all of the Koopas, then simply leave the area and come back to make them respawn. As soon as you're ready, leave through the door on the right. Grab the Fire Flower in this room and then start destroying the Piranha Plants. If you lose your Fire Power, then wait by the pipe where you originally got the Fire Flower and another one will appear for you. I really like the different sound and visual effects that were added in whenever you approached the boss layers. We are now at Ridley, aka Bowser Jr. Hit the P-Switch once you're ready for the battle to begin. Probably the best strategy to use here is to jump on Bowser Jr. three times to defeat him, but you can also use fireballs to get the job done as well. I like that the stage takes place in the Super Mario Bros. 3 underground stage type. I think that it makes the most sense considering its starry looking background. I always wondered why the underground stages in Super Mario Bros. 3 had an outer space looking background. Whatever though, it doesn't really matter. Once you've defeated Bowser Jr., hop into his clown car and fly to the upper right. Exit the area via the cloud platforms and then start making your way down. For an easy time throughout this area, just wait for the thwomps to slam down and then walk across the tops of them with a Karibo shoe. One thing that I like here in the Super Mario Maker is some of the things that they added in that you wouldn't have expected them to. Like being able to wear Buzzy Beetle on spiny shells as helmets. That's pretty awesome and kind of hilarious in my opinion. Heck, the spiny shells will even let you destroy otherwise unbreakable blocks while you wear it, which you'll get to see later on in this stage. I like how you have to build up Mario's power throughout the stage by collecting so many different power-ups at once. You'll have to make use of Fire Flowers and Super Leafs while riding in Karibo shoes, wearing shell helmets, and flying in Lakitu's clouds. That's not counting the parts where you'll end up getting Star Men either. It kind of reminds me of how you have to collect a lot of different enhancements for Samus's power suit in order to progress in Metroid. Next up, we have to go through the pipe at the very bottom of this area. And there we go! Just keep following the arrow signs to progress through the next few areas. You'll have to hop out of the shoe a couple of times in order to break some bricks with Raccoon Mario's tail. One thing that I don't like about the Super Mario Maker is that they didn't include some of the suit power-ups, like the frog suit, tanuki suit, hammer suit, or heck, even the penguin suit. Those were some of my favorite power-ups, so I'm kind of sad to see that they weren't included. But oh well, I'm still happy with what we got. And who knows, we may eventually get those upgrades as a DLC. We'll just have to wait and find out. Next up, we have to break the bricks down here. I like the inclusion of pipes that endlessly spawn weaker enemies. Obviously, those are supposed to mimic the tubes that also release the weaker enemies in the original Metroid. I always use those tubes to recover all of my energy and missiles back to full, as I'm sure pretty much everyone else did as well. Seems like you gotta get rid of a cloud platform if you want to go through a door. In this area, you're going to have to get a star man and then make a mad dash for it. You'll have Bowser breathing huge fireballs at you, but they won't be a problem if you're under the effects of a star man. Go ahead and ride the elevator up to the top. Once you get to the top, you're going to have to put a spiny shell on. I'm not sure if there's a way to put one on over a Buzzy Beetle helmet. I'm pressing buttons and I can't seem to get rid of the Buzzy Beetle one. I'll just take a hit and lose the Buzzy Beetle helmet. And there we go! Once you've gotten the spiny helmet, break the unbreakable blocks to the left and then start heading down. Once you're at the bottom, climb the vine to the right. Break the unbreakable blocks and then head through the pipe. Break some more unbreakable blocks in this room and watch out for the flying blooper. You'll probably want to steal the cloud from the blooper so that you can fly over the spikes on the right. If you're powered up enough, then you can just take hits and run across them while you're invincible since you can get another Super Leaf and a Karibo shoe directly after the spikes. Once you're ready to progress, make your way to the left and head through the pipe. I'm just gonna get the shoe and then make a mad dash for it. Alright, we are just about to Mother Brain, aka Bowser. 
Be careful of the cannonballs and the bloopers as you make your way to the left. There will be two question blocks you can get in this area, and both of them contain fire flowers. You'll want to try your best to stay fire, Mario, for the final battle. You can get another spiny helmet and a Karibo shoe over here, and then you can just lose your spiny helmet right away. After you've gotten the shoe and helmet, start making your way back to the right, and then finally make your way back to the left one more time. There's a pipe and even a bullet bill further to the left that'll supply you with fire flowers if you should need one. Take out the piranha plants with fireballs as you work your way over there. Most of the cannons in this area just fire coins, but there are a couple of them that'll shoot bullet bills at you, so be careful of that. Once you've gotten to Bowser, just position yourself on the far left cannon and jump and shoot fireballs at him. Pay attention to the fire bar at the top so that you don't accidentally jump into it like I did a moment ago. Don't worry too much about Bowser's attacks because he'll mostly just stand there and keep jumping as you pummel him with fireballs. It'll take quite a few shots, but he'll eventually go down. Overall, this battle is pretty easy. Once you've defeated Bowser, head to the left. Take the elevator up and get ready for the Mario equivalent to the self-destruct sequence from Metroid. You'll need to lose your power-ups before you can start the self-destruct sequence, but that's okay since there's a Super Mushroom and a Fire Flower waiting for you. Once you're ready, start making your way down and the giant spiny will start chasing after you. Quickly dodge all the spikes as you go down, then after that avoid all the flamethrowers as you work your way back up. Get the Karibo shoe once you've made it to the end of the area, and then head through the pipe on the left. And just like that, we are now at the end of the stage. Onward to the next level. The next stage is called Bowser's Revenge, and it was created by Faceless Tuna on YouTube, or Danny the Third according to his nickname on his console. Perhaps your biggest obstacle in this stage are the tons of potaboos and flaming cheap cheeps that'll try to attack you from below. Yoshi also makes an appearance in this stage, which is pretty cool. If you have Yoshi with you, then you can grab and spit the Hammer Brothers hammers back at them. Likewise, you can also use the potaboos, flaming cheap cheeps, and even Bowser's fireballs as weapons as well. You can use the POW block right here to instantly kill the giant Bowser that'll be blocking your way. After you've gotten the giant Bowser out of the way, you'll want to form a bridge above you using the invisible blocks. Otherwise, you'll bounce off of them and fall into the lava if you try to make the jump without getting on the bridge. Take it slowly throughout this area and pass by the circles of booze whenever you have the opening to do so. There's a vine in the block to the right. Be careful as you climb it because three Goombas will try to fall down and hit you. There's a Star Man hidden inside of an invisible block. I'd recommend getting it and then quickly make your way through this next area. If you're fast enough, then you can reach Bowser Jr. and finish him off instantly. As soon as you've finished off Bowser Jr., get in his clown car and then fly to the upper right. Just keep following the coins and the arrows to reach the pipe that'll take you to the next area. There's another giant Bowser straight ahead. I'd recommend waiting for him to jump and then quickly run under him and grab the axe. Easy enough. Time for the next stage. The next level is called Frantic Fortress Factory, and it was created by Yogi3000 on GameFAQs, or Tommy according to his nickname on his console. This is a really interesting type of castle stage. There are quite a few pipes here and there that produce enemies and items, and a handful of the stage will have you riding on conveyor belts while you avoid traps and other obstacles, which I think is pretty fun to do. You don't have to fight Bowser or Bowser Jr. in this castle, but that's okay. Not all castles need them as bosses. I kind of wish that they would have included the Koopalings in this game as well, but like I said earlier, there's always the chance that we could get them as DLC later on. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. You have to hit this P-switch in order to progress through the level. Just gotta wait for the effects of the P-switch to wear off now so that the conveyor will start moving again. Just hold it down to avoid the grinders as the conveyors take you past them. 
There's a vine in this question block. Hit the question block and then carefully jump to it and start climbing. Head to the door on the right once you've reached the top. And just like that, we are now at the end of the stage. Just stand still and the stage will push you over to the piece which that'll reveal the axe. Alright, time for the next level. The next stage is called Yoshi Betrayal, and it's the last stage in this part that I'm going to play through that was created by Yogi3000, aka Tommy. As I'm sure you figured out from the title of this stage, you're mostly going to be sacrificing Yoshi into endless pits in order to make most of the jumps throughout this level. I love all of the sound effects that were added in at the parts where you're supposed to abandon Yoshi. This level isn't very long, in fact it'll be over after these auto-scrolling parts, but this is still an awesome stage in my opinion. I also really like that there are grinders in most of the spots where you're supposed to jump off of Yoshi. That just makes his death seem even more gruesome. We are just about to the end of the stage. I love the trap that was set for Mario at the goalpost. It serves him right for all of the pain that he caused Yoshi throughout the level. Time for the next stage. The next level is called Pipe Dream, and it was created by Nice Trio 5 on GameFAX or Bodhi according to his nickname on his console. This is another maze type level that'll have you going through several identical looking rooms. The rooms have some minor differences, so it's not too hard to figure out the correct path through the area, but you'll still need to keep your eyes peeled for different clues. You'll have to utilize bob bombs at certain parts in order to break through blocks that'll be blocking your way, which is pretty cool. In this room is a cape feather, which you'll need in order to progress deeper into the stage. I remember whenever I was a kid, I always thought that the cape feathers were popsicles. I don't know, they just always looked like popsicles to me as a kid. From here you have to head back to room number two. You'll find a trampoline in there that you'll need in order to complete the level. I always liked the ghost house stages in Super Mario World. It's too bad that only one of them had a boss battle though, but that's alright. From here we have to take the trampoline back to room number one. And from there, we can use it to reach the door that takes us even further into the stage. Drop the trampoline over here and use the cape to spin the blocks. After that, place the trampoline on the question block and use it to reach the door. From here, there aren't any more riddles or puzzles for you to solve, so it's a pretty straightforward path to the end of the stage. If you know what pipes to take, anyway. Alright, go through this pipe over here. Time for the next stage! The next level is called Careful, and it was created by What a Wreck on GameFAX, or The Wrecker according to his nickname on his console. This level is filled to the brim with tight spaces that are lined with spikes and endless pits, and as the name of the stage suggests, you're going to have to be careful in order to avoid dying to either one. Just keep running through this area until you get to a narrow space that you can fall down into. Once you've reached that spot, then go down and under to avoid the Koopa Troopa. Once you've reached the end of the platform, you can either let a bullet bill follow you and you can hop on it to get some height, or you can jump out and then turn back around in mid-air and wall jump off of the wall to the left in order to reach the platforms above you. Wait on this platform until the cannon shoots a bullet bill. Let the bullet bill pass you a little bit and then use it to cross the gap and reach the next platform. You're going to need a Koopa shell in order to cross this long line of spikes. Just throw the shell and then let it bounce back to you and jump on it as it's going back to the right. Use the mid-air spin to slow your descent and you'll reach the flagpole just fine. The next stage is called Bomb for Hire, and it's the last stage in this part that I'm going to play through that was created by What a Wreck, aka The Wrecker. This is a pretty fast-paced castle stage. You're going to want to keep running because you'll have to jump on some platforms that are being guarded by thwomps, but on some of them you won't have a safe place to land and wait at, so you'll need to keep running to avoid getting crushed. You got some tight jumps throughout this area. Do your best to avoid the potaboos as you make your way to the top. The stage got its name after what's coming up. You'll come up to a bob bomb that's been caged up and you're going to have to release it from its cage and use it to destroy the bricks that are blocking your way forward. 
You'll also need the spring in order to progress as well, because there's a giant wall to the right and there aren't any invisible blocks that you can use to form stepping stones with. At least I haven't found any. Don't worry too much if the spring falls into the lava, because you can make it respawn by walking off of the screen and then going back to where it's located at. We are just about to the end of the level. Keep an eye on the fireballs that Bowser's breathing at you, and use the spring whenever the time is right. Onward to the next stage. The next level is called Big Boo's Big Bash, and it was created by Aftershock576 on GameFAX, or Vivi according to her nickname on her console. This is another maze level, and a very well created one I might add. This stage can end up being one of the most confusing ones that you'll find on the Super Mario Maker. Your first destination is to the upper left of these music note blocks. Be careful of the stretch boos and enter the pipe that you'll find at the end of these platforms. Head through the second door from the left to get a Super Mushroom. You'll have to be Super Mario in order to get a spring later in the level, so try your best not to get hit after you get the Super Mushroom. Don't worry too much if you do lose it though, because you can always go back to that room and get another one. From here you'll want to head to the right. Just avoid all of the boos as you head that way. Once you've reached the dead end, start making your way upward, and then start heading to the left to find the spring that I mentioned before. Just hop over this, and again, and there we go. Once you've obtained the spring, hop down and to the left. From here you'll want to keep making your way even further left. Keep going that way until you reach the five doors that we were at earlier, and then enter the pipe that's above them. Just hop down and to the left and enter this pipe right here. Here's where the spring comes into play. You'll want to use the spring to create a bridge out of invisible blocks. Once you've hit enough invisible blocks, head to the right and enter the same pipe that you entered before. Alright, now you'll want to enter that exact same pipe one more time, and then you'll be on the bridge that you created. Head through the door and then keep following the straightforward path from here to be at the boss of this stage. The boss of this stage is two giant winged boos, or more if you free them from certain question blocks. Your goal is to find the question block that has the P-switch that you need in order to reach the goal post. Overall, this was a really well designed boss battle in my opinion. Alright, time for the next stage. Alright. This is the final stage that I'm going to play for this part. This stage is called Not Another Auto Level, and it was created by Rular2 on GameFAX, or Rular according to his nickname on his console. The beginning of this stage starts off like one of those that you don't have to press any buttons for, but the real stage starts after that. You'll have boss battles against Bowser Jr. and Bowser throughout this stage. It's completely possible to skip the battle against Bowser Jr., but we'll get to that in just a moment. For now, just dodge the fire bars and potaboos. Alright, we are now at Bowser Jr. Like I said before, you don't actually have to defeat Bowser Jr. The main objective in this room is to get the P-Switch that you see in the upper right, so I'd focus more on that than fighting him. In fact, I would recommend pushing one P-Switch and then pick up a second one and take it with you, because it'll save you a little bit of time later on in the stage. Just wait for the effects of the P-Switch to wear off real quick. Take your time as you head to the right from here and carefully maneuver past the Poe to Boos and Fire Bars. Build up some speed around this area and then run past all the thwomps. You can also get past the flamethrowers if you're quick enough. Here's the part that I recommended bringing the second P-Switch for. Just hit the P-Switch and enter the door to get a Star Man. Once you've got the Star Man, return to the room that you were originally in and start heading to the right. Enter the door at the end of this area, and then continue to follow the straightforward path until you get to the boss battle against Bowser. You have a few different options for how you can defeat Bowser. You can try defeating him with Goombas and power-ups, or you can use the Cape Feather and slip past the blocks that are on the right, or you can use the P-Switch to bypass the blocks. Your choice. 
I think that it's easiest to use the cape, though. Wait for the timing to get past Bowser, and there we go. That is it for part two.